Hello everyone, Brian here, and welcome to the Fowgel. Fowgel? Fowgel. Fowl? I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, this is a game I found on Itch.io while browsing new games. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just kind of one of those uh, one-person dev team kind of things. Um, but I wanted to play it because it the topic kind of caught my attention. Um, and it caught my attention for a couple of different reasons. So the topic apparently is that you are the leader of a cult and you have to choose the, or I, I don't know, you have to choose the chancellor and the sacrifice for uh, the year. Now, the reason that, um, the reason that I wanted to play it, the reason that I found it interesting uh, is because all too often, especially with small developers, you do see this tendency to approach uh, something that could be considered dark humor or could be considered a controversial subject, and you don't really know how they're going to approach it. Are they going to approach it, you know, completely lightheartedly without actually thinking about the ramifications of what it is they're having you do? Or are they going to approach it from an intelligent standpoint and, you know, Yes, it's yes, you're the leader of a cult and yes, you're doing these horrible things, but do they really make you think about it? So that's why we're uh, that's why we're approaching this. And I appear to have lost the music. So I don't know, but uh, we'll just get right in. We'll we'll try to play it. Let's see. Uh, dear newly appointed Chief Judge, congratulations on your ordained duty as Chief Judge. Please read and sign the two documents provided to begin your duty. The fate of the nation lies in your hands. Do not anger the Fowgel. The Council supports you. Many blessings, the Council. Blessed is our great Fowgel. Okie dokie then. I think we'll just put that away. And uh, let's see. Letter of Appointment. The Council congratulates and welcomes you. The Fowgel has spoken and appointed you as Chief Judge for the new administration. Please read Annex A before acknowledging your blessed duties below. Uh, there's like this small print here that I really can't read. I don't know if it's important. I don't know if it's actually real text or not, uh, or if it's just meant to look like fine print. Uh, let's uh, check out the second letter. Letter of appointment, Annex A, duty and tasking. Your task is to appoint the nation's chancellor and sacrifice for the year. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. The chancellor will bless the nation with his gifts and talents. The sacrifice will appe appease our great Fowgel. Every year, an annual report will be pre presented to inform you on the nation's progress. Do not let any ratings hit zero, lest the Fowgel be angered. Okay. So, don't want to anger the Fowgel. I still don't know how to pronounce that. Um, okay, click click to begin. As is is that is that all? What do I what do, what is this? Family records. The Grinfeld family are the descendants of Ur, blessed with bountiful harvests. They are gifted farmers and masters of the crop, owners of the Ur fields. The nation relies heavily on their harvest for food stock. Their emblem color is green. The Aestrum family come from the chosen tribe of Eo, the holy priests of the Fowgel. They meditate for they mediate for the nation and appease the Fowgel with their devotions. They are shepherds for the people and strong in faith. Their emblem color is turquoise. I'm gonna come right out and let you guys know. Uh, I'm an atheist, although I'm not like openly against religion as some atheists might be. Um, my feeling on matters of religion is if you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone, you know? And that's that seems to work well for me so far. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's interesting because clearly this Fowgel that they're referring to is, is some kind of god figure, maybe. Um, or maybe it's the leader of the cult and I'm the chief judge. Uh, I don't know, but whoever this Fowgel is, they're obviously uh, attempting to raise themselves to some sort of deity figure. What's this? The Fowgel Chronicle. 
Since the beginning of time, the Fougil watched over us. Blessed are thee who obey. The council mediates, uh, blah, 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 keeps peace, protects us, demands a sacrifice once a year to appease the great Fougil. Blessed is the Fougil, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Yeah, propaganda. Love it. Uh, okay, what do we have here? Name, Sulong Greenfield. Gender female, age 56, grievances, god complex. Okay. Sulong Greenfield. Grinfeld. Grinfeld. Who are the Grinfelds? Oh yeah, they're the ones who make the food. Gotcha. Okay, name Daifei Iron Clay. Gender female, age 28, grievances agnostic. Mm, right. Fudin Redmain. Gender man. Do, do I have any more information about these people? No, they're just... That's, that's, that's what I get. Uh, okay, Fijing... Aestrum. Gender male, age 25. Grievances. Oh, he's an alcoholic. Well, that's not good. Alcoholism isn't good. Zhuelong Kinfolk. Gender male, age 18. Grievances. Curse of Eden. All right. So, I guess, like, I just, oh, I just, I have to drag it. Okay. Uh, what are these? Annual report, faith 50, community 50, food 50, shelter 50. Okay. Uh, council report for the council popularity. All right. So, okay. So let's see. My thinking is that we, we don't want to anger either of our two chief families. So the chief families are the Grinfelds and... The Aostroms, we don't want to, we don't want to anger either of them because they're making our food and they're, uh, administering to the flock. So, these are the three that we, that we look at for our sacrifice. So far, I'm not seeing what I was talking about a minute ago. I'm not seeing any kind of uh, I, I, and I mean, you know, it may come when I get to the end of a year and the whole thing cycles over. I don't know. We'll have to see. But so far, I'm not seeing anything that's really making me think about what I'm doing. Uh, it's just choose a sacrifice, choose a chancellor. Watch out for your faith and community, food and shelter, things like that. Um, I don't really have any options. Like, there's, there's no additional information I don't know what these grievances are. Like, um, I know what agnostic means. Uh, so if these people are agnostic, that means that they probably don't hold a whole lot of stock in our, um, in our uh, Lord Fougel, as we must call them. Um, okay, I'm going to eliminate Zuelong. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they mean by the Curse of Eden. It might be a reference that I'm not getting, but age 18, uh, I mean, unless we're really going for virgin sacrifice, but I mean, it, it, these these ones are just as easily virgins. I mean, no judgment on people who decide to stay virgins late into their late into their lives. And then here's the other thing, right? Because it's not making me think about it, because it's not uh, giving me the, you know, any other kind of background. One thing that's really interesting about that is that it really gives you the opportunity to learn something about yourself, to project a part of yourself into the game. We have to sacrifice someone, right? In order to progress the game, we have to sacrifice someone. So, with no further information, it really does fall on the player to determine who do you sacrifice and what is the deciding factor. And in this case, because I don't have any further information, and these two people, we've got, they're both agnostic. Uh, one is male and one is female, but we, we don't really want to let those two, those things uh, come into play. What we have is purely mathematical. The only, the only determination that I can make is purely mathematical, and that is age 28, age 58. So, 
sacrifice. Was was that is that it is that is that done? I mean, I guess. Uh, okay, that does it. It doesn't. It hasn't updated anything yet, so I don't know if anything's changed. Um, and then we want to choose a chancellor. So the chancellor, I think, is go we're going to want that to come from uh, one of our two uh, main families. And when it comes down to it, uh, my feeling is this god complex thing is not really a problem. But what is a problem is experience, age 56 versus age 25, and also alcoholism. I don't know if I want an alcoholic as my chancellor. So, chancellor, boom, done. Chosen, thus, Sulong Grinfeld was appointed chancellor. Under her guidance, the nation grew in food, but the nation suffered by her flaws in faith. Oh, maybe that god complex was a problem. I don't... interesting. And Fudin Redmain was appointed sacrifice. By his sacrifice, the Fougel was appeased. Still, the grievances of the remaining affected the faith, and the Fougel blessed the nation with community. And the Fougel ble blessed the nation with food. Still, the grievances of the remaining... Oh, this is just telling me... Okay, so... The grievances of some of the remaining people affected their faith, and the grievances of the remaining affected the shelter. So... So let's check our report. Yeah, see, so faith went down. Community... Eh, whatever. Food... Super good. Shelter... Not so much. Popularity is still 100%. So, right, so we don't want to, again, we, we don't want to sacrifice either, we don't want to sacrifice the people from our uh, two main clans, because, although, 80 years old. Anyway. So... Okay, first of all, I'm going to appoint the Chancellor from the other family, because if we remember, the Aestrums are the priests, and my faith is suffering right now, so we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to leave that. We're doing really well in food, so technically we could... Uh, sacrifice the Grinfeld, but I don't, I don't want to do that, again, because they're one of the, the important families. Now, we do have a problem, because what we're looking at here is our faith is low, but our shelter is also low. So, I have a feeling that agnostic affects the shelter, or not the shelter, affects the faith. But, Alcoholism probably affects shelter, right? I don't know. This game could really use... It could really use something that, you know, gives you a little bit more information about what's going on. Oh! Okay! Oh! All right, the Iron Clay family are masters of technology and skilled builders. They are essential to the infrastructure of the nation, and their works keep the nation safe from the disasters of the wrath of the Fougel. Their emblem color is blue. Okay, so all of the families are important. Oh, okay, so that does kind of make you think about what you're doing. I mean, oh, right, mm. okay, uh, the Red Maiden family are gifted with charisma 
and keepers of peace. They hold the staff of Zeitgeist and keep the nation together as one. They have strong influence and sway over the people. Their emblem color is red. The Kinfolk family arose from the commons, a time when the different bloods mix. They are blessed in skill by number, often possessing two or more talents, however, at the cost of never being able to master them. So who did I sacrifice last year? I can't remember. I think it was the purple one, right? It was the purple one? Okay, but since, anyway, since my faith is hurting, uh, the Aestrums are still the right choice for Chancellor because hopefully that'll help my faith. Um, oh, but this puts everything into a whole new light because it's like, my faith is hurting, but I also need, I also need to help my shelter. So, who's the shelter person? The red mains? No, the iron clays. The iron clays are the builders. Okay, so, you. And then, I imagine that gifted with charisma and keepers of peace means that they do community sure so all right so let's see what happens if we sacrifice the purple person again thus philem Philem Aestrum was appointed chancellor. Under his guidance, the nation grew in faith, but the nation suffered by his flaws in shelter. Uh, by her sacrifice. Wow. Bless the nation with faith, but the grievances of the remaining affected the community and affected the food and affected the shelter. Wow. Okay. So that's... Oh, goodness. Okay, so that's really difficult to try and keep a balance on, isn't it? Right. I mean, it'd be really nice. How's my popularity? My popularity's fine. It'd be really nice again if, okay, so like, so like I say, uh, we assume that each of these people affects the outcome of one thing or another. Uh, the game could... Okay. So, here's a little game design thing. And uh, anyone who's keeping up with my channel knows that I'm trying to take an approach lately to talk about a game's design as I play the game, uh, try to keep different design things in mind. And I am all for minimalist tutorials in games because they allow the player an increased level of interactivity if your tutorial rather than being a huge text dump up front saying, okay, click this now. Okay, do this now. Okay, now you need to click this. And read and read and read and read. That's not good because it breaks the immersion. It breaks the people's engagement in the game. However, if you are going to go a minimalist tutorial route, you've still got to give the information that your player needs to make informed decisions. So, I'm basically just guessing. I'm taking a shot in the dark. When I say that, you know, making this guy Chancellor is going to improve my faith, well, okay, I know that because the Aestrums are the priest family, and I can say that, okay, if I uh, make this person the sacrifice, it's going to cause my food to suffer because they're the farmers. 
that's fairly straightforward. What is not straightforward is um, how the people left over affect the outcome and what these grievances mean. Like, I have no idea what locus gregaria means. Sorry. I, again, if, if that's a reference to something, I'm not getting it. Um, so if you're going to go with this minimalistic approach where you don't hold the player's hand and you don't give them a lot of information up front, you've still got to provide that information somehow. Maybe you provide the information through gameplay. Uh, maybe, you know, in one of these things, there's you know, uh, an encyclopedia where if the player is interested, they can look it up because all I'm getting now, like, this is all I've got. This is all of the information I have. And I can look at the council report, right? But all it does is tell me I'm in year two. My popularity is still 100. And then I can look at this, which tells me that my faith, community, food, shelter, what those numbers are but it doesn't tell me how things are being influenced. So we'll go through one more year. We'll see if we can figure some of that out on our own. Um, so my food is still high. Lue Ming Grinfeld is generally disliked. So maybe a good... But yeah, see, like... He's got gluttony as a grievance. So if he has gluttony as a grievance, does that mean he's going to hurt my food? And again, you know, drought walker, is that going to, again, generally hurt my food if this person is left over? And if I don't sacrifice Lui Ming, is the generally disliked grievance going to hurt my community? Skeptic, that's going to hurt my faith, most likely, right? Locus Gregaria, whatever that means, I have no idea. But, you know, I don't... There, there, isn't, there isn't enough information in the game. That's the, that, that's the bottom line. There isn't enough information in the game. Um, an expanded tutorial might be nice, but if you want to keep it minimalistic, uh, you can go with a minimalistic approach and either have the information available or um, present the tutorial through gameplay. For instance, something that a lot of games use in order to present a tutorial that is also gameplay is during that first year, during that first year zero, have a, uh, you know, a tutorial character, someone who's like the, so I'm the chief judge, right? I was recently appointed as chief judge. What about the last chief judge? Have the last chief judge guide me through that first year and tell me this is what this means and this is what that means. And maybe during that first year, year zero, don't present me with five choices. Present me with three choices. You know, make it simpler for that first year so that you can get into the flow of things. And then, in addition to that, a an encyclopedia-type feature would also be useful to me because I'm the type of player who likes to look at things like that. Players who don't like to look at that don't have to. But having that available would be helpful. And what that encyclopedia thing would include would just be like, here are grievances that people might have and how they might influence. If you don't want to just throw numbers at things, then, you know, just some flavor text on each of these uh, grievances so that players know what they are. For now... Um, I'm going to go with her as the sacrifice and him as the chancellor. I don't know. Lue Fei Eostrom was appointed chancellor. Under his guidance, the nation grew in faith, but we suffered in food. 
Great. Bless the nation with faith. And we lost community food and shelter again. So clearly whatever was... Whatever was going on... What is this now? Dear Chief Judge, it has come to the council's notice that your popularity among the nation has dropped. Common reasons for this include biasness to a particular family, sacrificing under 20 See. Again, this is it it's it's nice that this has come uh you know, it's nice that this is that this has now come out and that I now know that I'll lose popularity for sacrificing children or being biased towards a particular family. Actually, didn't I do both of those things? Because I made uh I made the Aostroms the Chancellors twice in a row. And in that last round, didn't I sacrifice a 15-year-old? And, 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 you know, that's fine that there are penalties for that, but most players are going to find it unfair if they only find out about those penalties after the fact. So, again, if you don't want to do a huge text dump right up front, it's okay to space things out a little while. I was talking about making the last chief judge the, you know, a, a guide, a tutorial. And maybe he does that over a couple of years. If you have multiple mechanics and you don't want to introduce all of your mechanics at once, stage them out over a couple of years throughout the beginning of the game. Make it so that, um, you know, during the first year you have three options, but they're all over 20. So that you don't have the opportunity to sacrifice a child during that first year. All that you're doing in that first year is learning how the basic mechanic of assigning a chancellor and signing a sacrifice works. Okay, move on. Second year. Now we introduce a new mechanic, which is the biasness to a particular family. Don't make the same family chancellor twice in a row. Don't make the same family sacrifice twice in a row. Fine. Third year. Now we introduce someone under 20. And we say, you know, yes, there might be a reason you want to sacrifice someone who's below 20. Be aware that might affect your popularity. You know, and then just stage it out. If there are multiple mechanics that you want to introduce, stage your mechanics out so that they're not all being dumped at once and uh, present your tutorial in that way, allowing the player to actually do what they're doing. Um, minimalist tutorials are fine, but you still have to make sure that all of your mechanics are understood because the last thing that you want is for your player to not understand a mechanic and have that come back as a penalty to them in the future. Now, that being said, the game did, uh, this game did, you know, present some interesting, some interesting things. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, um, you know, like a, uh, I don't, I don't like comparing one game to another, but if I had to compare this to anything, it would, it, it's kind of similar to like, Papers, please. Um, in that, you know, really all that you're doing is you're deciding the fate of people. And you uh, identify, okay, you're going to be chancellor this year and you're going to be sacrificed. But it doesn't really provide me with the feeling that I was 100% looking for, which was that, you know, cult nations are a really sensitive topic because we talk about brainwashing, we talk about indoctrination, uh, these things come up in our actual society. And when you're exploring a topic like that in a video game, it's very easy to fall into the trap of saying, well, it's just a video game and treat those subjects very lightly. And I can see hints that the developer of this game has 
tried to approach them with a little bit of gravity, but again, I don't really feel the, you know, the making me think about it. The, because these people, they don't even have, they don't even have portraits. And maybe it's something that's coming. Maybe there are going to be, maybe the developer is going to add, you know, portraits and then all of these people who are obviously randomly generated, uh, they'll, they'll also have randomly drawn portraits, things like that. I don't know. But they don't even have any portraits. Uh, some flavor text, a little bit of a bio on each of these people, you know, get to know the people would really lend some weight to the decisions that we have to make in this game. Because in the end, we are deciding that, you know, we are deciding that this, who, who are we deciding on? We are deciding that 56-year-old Fialam Redmayne is going to die. That we've just decided that. Where's the gravity? We've decided that you're you're going to be our leader. I don't know what that's going to do. And and yes, these end chapter screens. These end chapter screens do try to lend some gravity to it. You know, it says under her guidance, the nation grew in general, but the nation suffered by her flaws and fate. And then it talks about how, um, you know, the sacrifice of this person uh, appeased the Fougel, and then it tells you how the community was affected. But there's no real gravity to it because we don't feel any attachment to these people. We don't feel any attachment to these characters. And that's key in a game that is trying to present some kind of um, sensitive topic like this. Anyway, I've gone on for long enough. Uh, I didn't intend for this episode to be over half an hour long. Um, but uh, it, um, you know, it's an interesting game. It's on Itch.io. Uh, go check it out if you're interested in it. Link's in the description down below. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel to remain up to date on any of my new uploads. And if you've got the time, please feel free to check out my Patreon page. Uh, I've got some great ideas for the future, and if you could support me in making that a reality, I would be very much appreciative. Really like to thank everyone for watching, and as always, we'll see you again next time.